Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Obviously, one of the big themes for the last few weeks has been these Hollywood strikes, first the Writers Guild strike and now the Screen Actors Guild strike as well, that while about a lot of different issues have artificial intelligence and the future of their professions right at the heart of them. Now, as if designed to put a firm point on just how scary this is for some of the talent involved in these strikes, Yesterday, Simulation Inc. dropped an example of their new tool, which is a generative TV and showrunner agent. The promise that they offer is creating episodes of TV shows with a single prompt. From there, their tool, Show One, will write, animate, direct, voice, and edit the show for them. Now, the example they gave, which really hit the whole issue right on the nose, was an AI-generated episode of South Park that was all about the SAG strike. Alongside it, they released a paper called To Infinity and Beyond, Show One and Showrunner Agents in Multi-Agent Simulations. The abstract reads, In this work, we present our approach to generating high-quality episodic content for intellectual property using large language models, custom state-of-the-art diffusion models, and our multi-agent simulation for contextualization, story progression, and behavioral control. Now, the big new dimension that they are adding to this is basically the role of showrunner. They point out that while current generative AI systems are great at short-term or specific tasks through prompt engineering, they don't have, quote, contextual guidance or intentionality to either a user or an automated generative story system as part of a long-term creative process. They point out that this is essential to producing, quote, high-quality creative works, especially in the context of existing IPs. Now, for those of you who are interested in story and the long-term capacity of AI to write and create stories, the paper is really interesting. They discuss, for example, the slot machine effect, which they define as a scenario where the generation of AI-produced content feels more like a random game of chance rather than a deliberative creative process, and they discuss how they try to address that with this new Show One model. In their announcement tweet, they write, Our goal at the simulation is AGI, AIs that are truly alive, not chatbots that pop into existence when we speak, but AI people living real daily lives in simulations growing over time. We built showrunner agents and are building show one model to give our AIs infinite stories. After sharing a set of sample South Park episodes, they write, We are working with creators and will be announcing several original IP simulations with attached AI TV shows later this year. A space exploration simulation, The Prize. A satire of Silicon Valley simulation, Exit Valley. A playful detective simulation about Charlie Jupiter. They conclude, Ultimately, we think single-agent chatbots will fail because they have no lives and can't empathize. Does anyone really want endless small talk with a brain in a jar? The AI should have their own lives, and for that, we need societies of AIs. Less her, more free guy. So this popped off on Twitter. Thousands and thousands of people have shared it. 700,000 people have viewed the original video. Now, while some people pointed out that this was a little inopportune at the moment, given the strike happening right now, others were just focused on the creative possibilities that are coming down the pipeline. Bilawal Sidhu writes, We're going very quickly from doing the low-level stuff to orchestrating this all at a higher level of abstraction. It will be mind-blowing. Next up on the brief, we officially have dueling open letters. This time, a new letter signed by more than 1,300 experts argues that AI is a force for good and that fears around its long-term existential risks have been overblown. The letter was organized by BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT in the UK, and as the BBC describes it, signatories to the BCS letter come from a range of backgrounds, business, academia, public bodies, and think tanks, though none are as well known as Elon Musk or run major AI companies like OpenAI. Speaking of AI for good, OpenAI and the American Journalism Project have announced a partnership through which OpenAI will give $5 million in cash, along with $5 million in OpenAI API credits, to local news publishers in order to help them both shape as well as use new generative AI tools in supporting local news efforts. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman says, We proudly support the American Journalism Project's mission to strengthen our democracy by rebuilding the country's local news sector. This collaboration underscores our mission and belief that AI should benefit everyone and be used as a tool to enhance work. Now, this comes a week after OpenAI announced a two-year deal with the Associated Press to use AP content to help train OpenAI's model. Meanwhile, other early attempts to use AI-generated content in publishers haven't gone so well. Geo Media, that owns companies like Gizmodo, has been roundly ridiculed over the last few weeks for error-ridden articles that they published that were written by AI. However, that score, along with antipathy from Geo staff, is not enough to change course. Merrill Brown, Geo's editorial director, said it is absolutely a thing we want to do more of. And CEO Jim Spanfeller says, I think it would be irresponsible to not be testing it. Over in the U.S., the regulatory march around AI continues. And yet, as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer focuses on comprehensive legislation, other senators are focused on smaller, more defined measures. 
Michigan Senator Gary Peters has introduced legislation called the AI Lead Act, which is scheduled for a markup on Wednesday of this week and is focused exclusively on the federal government itself in terms of how it builds, buys, and deploys AI-driven systems. Daniel Ho, a member of the White House's National AI Advisory Committee, said, The government is going to be one of the largest purchasers of AI systems, so the standard that it sets will have a pronounced impact on responsible AI innovation. Meanwhile, just like we covered antipathy from Gary Gensler and the SEC towards AI on yesterday's show, a different financial regulator, this time the Fed's banking regulator, Michael S. Barr, the Fed's vice chair for supervision, has made another warning about AI, saying that it could lead to illegal lending practices such as excluding minorities. Barr said, while these technologies have enormous potential, they also carry risks of violating fair lending laws and perpetuating the very disparities that they have the potential to address. The example that he gave was digital redlining, where minority communities are denied access to credit or housing opportunities. The fear is, of course, that AI trained on prejudiced or biased data could end up reinforcing and extending that prejudice or bias. So just another example of how basically every department in the government is trying to figure out how AI is going to impact what they have particular oversight into. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying it, you should go subscribe to the AI Breakdown newsletter. It comes out every morning and features the five most interesting or important stories in AI. You can find a link down below in the show notes. Thanks again for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI breakdown.